Conference USA Media Days from the court where the Dallas G League team plays. That's why the Dallas Mavericks logo is behind us. We're at the Baylor Scott and White Performance Center right across the street from the Star, which is where the Dallas Cowboys practice. But now we're going to talk about Middle Tennessee basketball. And joining us, the head women's basketball coach who's looking for his 16th consecutive postseason, Rick Ensel. Rick, good to have you here. Ron, how are you? And another, I'm doing great. And another new member of Conference USA coaching fraternity. Please welcome Nick McDevitt. Nick, we're going to talk to the women's coach first, if you don't mind. Absolutely. I promise I'll get to you. I don't, I don't, I don't mess that up. Um, coach, first of all, you finished 18 and 13. You got to go to the WNIT. You are looking for the 16th straight postseason uh, appearance coming up in 2019. The consistency of your program, what do you base that on? I would say that, you know, really and truly, it's, this, this is my 14th year. Yeah. They went to the tournaments right. two times before. You know, just uh, Murfreesboro is a great place to live, great place to recruit to, great administration, good crowd support. Uh, why wouldn't you want to play there? Yeah. So that's what adds to the consistency there. Four players, including three starters, missed a total of 64 games last season. You, I hope you still have a full complement of players right now, but that was tough for you, wasn't it? It was. It was. Three of those were starters, uh, and two of them was out most of the year. And uh, But uh, you know what that did, Ron? I was able to play a lot of people throughout the year, and I've got a lot of those young ladies coming back. So, that, you know, it's going to help us this year. Uh, you know, I, I kind of glossed over it. I didn't mean to. I want to talk about getting back to what makes your program great. When I first met you, uh, I can't even remember how many years ago, you recruit kids from winning programs that are in the area. I personally think that's a big reason for your success. Well, we recruit young ladies from winning programs all over the country, but one of the things we look for is how, what are they doing? What do they do at their high school level? What are they doing with their travel team, their AAU team? How do they act? You know, and, uh, you know, if you know how to win, you can bring that with you to Middle Tennessee, and that's what we're all about. Well, Alicia Clark, who won a WNBA title this past season with the Seattle Storm, I talked to her before a Dallas Wings game earlier this year, and I said, what made you the player? Because this is a girl that was cut. In fact, Dan Hughes, her coach at Seattle, actually cut her once and kept coming back. She says, what I learned at Middle Tennessee State, she learned team, uh, teamwork and defense. Well, what a special young lady. Oh. Um, she... You know, everybody would like to have an Alicia Clark, but she was highly motivated herself. A lot of people want to give a lot of different people the credit. I give the credit to her because she could have quit several times oh. and didn't, came back. Now look at her. She's a, she's a world champion. And, and she understood her role, which is tough for college players. Yeah, I don't think they'd have won the title without her this I, year. I would agree 100%. To be honest with you, and they had a lot of great players, a lot of great players. But she also was a great player. Mm -hmm. You added your son, Matt, to the staff, was head coach at Ole Miss for five seasons, one of five women's basketball coaches to have a member of their family on the staff. What's that mean to you to have him part of it? Well, you know, every day when I walk in, I, I get to coach with my son, and uh, uh, it's really special, to be honest with you. I, look, I step back sometimes and just kind of watch him work. But the energy he's brought, he's been a head coach in the SEC, he's been one of the top recruiters in the country, and he brought that, thank goodness, that Dr. McPhee and Chris Massaro stood behind <laughs> us and, and hired him for mm -hmm. us because that's not doing anything but making our program better. Let's quickly talk about some of the players looking forward. You get two starters back, three key players. Who's the one player that needs to step up this season? Well, you really got more than one, but, you know, A.J., Alex Johnson, mm -hmm. is, she's got to get back healthy, and she is. And she has to continue the way that, that she started her career. And then you've got Queen Hayes. Uh, what, a, what a special player. Graduate you know, the transfer. fifth year, you know. And so uh, I would say if those two come to play, then we're going to be in the mix. Anybody else that has to come back from injury that you're counting on? Well, Kyla Allison. Kyla Allison missed the whole year, really. She got yep. hurt at the Ole Miss game. And really, we started her down the ladder about four or five, and now she's worked her way up. And I'd hate to start tonight without her in the lineup. I'll tell you, it's, it's always a pleasure watching your team because you guys play defense so well. 2018, 11 opponents under 50 points a game. Got to score. Got to score <laughs> in this league. You know, we played great defense, but we didn't score enough. And, uh, you know, um, we just didn't shoot the ball as well last year as we should. A lot of that came because all of our people were, were hurt. But, heck, you know, we still got to score. You know, we recruited those young ladies to shoot the basketball. We did. We just didn't make enough. All right, Rick. We'll be going to the men's side right now. Nick McDevitt joins us, the new head men's basketball coach over at Middle Tennessee. Nick, when I look at your teams at UNC Asheville, where you came from, 
you had interchangeable pieces, I got the sense. Is, is that a true statement? Yes, it, it is. We, we try to recruit to that, obviously. Um, I, I think um, the more versatile you can be uh, on both sides of the ball, really, both offensively and defensively, you, you give your team a, a chance to win against a variety of different opponents, whether it be playing a team that presses a lot or uh, a real physical team on the glass or a team that can really score it. I think when you have interchangeable parts and, and um, players that can play multiple positions, uh, do multiple things on the floor, it just gives you a chance to, to win uh, a lot of different styles of games. And um, that's what we try to recruit to. When I talked to some of my coaching buddies, I said, describe your style. They said, aggressive on defense, efficient on offense. Well, uh, you know, I, I think being aggressive on defense is something you can control night in and night out. Uh, we try to talk about toughness and effort and attitude uh, day in and day out. And uh, I, again, I think those are things you can control. You don't have to have a ton of talent uh, or be the best athlete to play hard. And uh, I think uh, if you're doing that on the defensive side of the ball, getting deflections, you can uh, repeat that over and over. Uh, and then shot selection is the really the, the biggest thing. And I mm -hmm. think the hardest thing to, to coach uh, in, in the game of basketball is shot selection. Uh, not every player understands what their, their, their mm -hmm. best shot or what the best shot for the team is. But if you can get your team to buy into shot selection, uh, and, and play hard on the defensive end, I think you give yourself a chance to win a lot of games. Now you lost your top five scores, but what was impressive to those of us that have been around the game a long time, you and your staff didn't panic when you lost players that played very important roles last season, did you? We didn't. Um, you know, uh, we, we wanted to make sure that we were strategic uh, in our um, approach to continue to build the, the program, build our roster for this year, but also looking down the road. Um, and, and we feel really comfortable and are really happy with the players that we've brought in. Uh, we signed seven new players uh, that are on this year's team. Uh, we've got two commitments uh, for the 19 class. So uh, all in all, since uh, early April, about nine new players uh, to our program. So uh, a lot of new faces. Uh, our, I think our fans and the fans for the, the other teams will need a, a roster watching us play before each game. But uh, we're, we're, they're, a fun, they're a fun group to, to coach and uh, want to get better. So that makes uh, my job every day awfully fun. I don't think there's any truth to the rumor that his first practice, he had little tags on, hello, my name is. <laughs> it's like the, the football coaches yeah, with the, 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 the tape on the helmet. <laughs> okay, you, 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 set, you talked about all the different players. What are one or two players that we should look for that has impressed you this season so far? Uh, well, a couple young men that uh, are going to have very different roles on this year's team that they that they had on last year's team. One, uh, James Hawthorne mm -hmm. uh, is a senior on this year's team, uh, had a role behind two very, very good players last year in Brandon Walters and Nick King. He's a 6'7 forward, uh, but he, he plays really hard, has a high motor, uh, brings a lot of intensity to every practice. Uh, he's, he's been great. Uh, he's one of our team leaders. And Antonio Green, uh, a young man that sat out last year after transferring to Middle Tennessee, uh, has really taken on, uh, taken ownership really of our program. Uh, is trying to be a leader on the floor. He really shoots the ball, but he's wanting to expand his game and become more of a complete player as opposed uh, to just a shooter. And uh, it's really been fun being around him over the last six or seven months. You talk about Antonio Green. I talked to some of the guys down at UT Rio Grande where he, where he played. He, he was probably the WAC's best three-point shooter a couple of years ago. But what stood out to the people I talked to, they said he was a good leader. He really is. Uh, he, he talks, uh, but it's, it's not just uh, chatter in practice. Mm -hmm. he, he really is uh, trying to lead the group. And we have, uh, again, so many young play players, new faces, guys uh, trying to uh, adapt to new roles. And Antonio's really the guy that's driving that. We talk uh, uh, to our team a lot about who drives winning. You know, there, there are guys that are playing the game, but others that drive winning. I think Antonio Green is one of those guys that drives winning for your team. Uh, and uh, again, he's going to be a major role or major factor in, in how good our team is this year. Well, welcome to the conference. Thank you, sir. Look forward, Rick. Always a pleasure, my friend. You too. Look Ron. forward to seeing you during the season. We will continue Conference USA Media Days right after this.